In the heart of the Appalachian Mountains, there existed a dense forest shrouded in mystery and darkness. Locals called it the Whispering Woods, for it was said that the trees whispered secrets to those who dared to enter. Among the many tales told about this eerie place, none were more chilling than the legend of the lost hiker. It was a foggy autumn evening when Sarah, an adventurous soul with a passion for exploring the unknown, decided to venture into the Whispering Woods alone. Armed with nothing but a flashlight and her courage, she set off into the forest, determined to uncover its secrets. As Sarah delved deeper into the woods, the trees seemed to close in around her, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. The air grew colder, and strange noises echoed through the darkness. But Sarah pressed on, her curiosity driving her forward. Hours passed, and Sarah realized she was hopelessly lost. Panic began to set in as she stumbled through the underbrush, her flashlight flickering ominously. Just when she thought all was lost, she heard it, the sound of whispering voices, barely audible above the rustling leaves. Terrified, Sarah spun around, searching for the source of the voices. But there was nothing there, just the endless expanse of trees stretching out in every direction. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, and Sarah felt a cold chill run down her spine. Desperate to escape, Sarah began to run, crashing through the undergrowth in a blind panic. But no matter how fast she ran, the whispers followed, growing louder and more sinister with each passing moment. She could feel eyes watching her from the shadows, unseen hands reaching out to grab her. Suddenly, Sarah tripped and fell, sprawling onto the forest floor. As she struggled to regain her footing, she felt something wrap around her ankle, pulling her down into the earth below. She screamed, clawing at the ground as she was dragged deeper and deeper into the darkness. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, the whispers stopped. Sarah lay trembling on the forest floor, her mind reeling with terror. Had it all been a hallucination, brought on by fear and exhaustion, or had she truly stumbled upon something sinister lurking within the depths of the whispering woods? To this day, Sarah's fate remains a mystery. Some say she perished in the forest that night, consumed by the darkness that lurked within. Others claim she still wanders the woods, trapped forever in a nightmare of her own making. But one thing is certain, those who dare to enter the whispering woods do so at their own peril, for not all who venture within ever return. The moon hung low in the night sky, casting an eerie glow over the turbulent waters that surrounded the Isle of Despair, a forsaken island shrouded in mystery and fear. For centuries, tales of cannibalistic tribes and unspeakable horrors had kept sailors at bay, but for Naomi, a young explorer with a thirst for adventure, the allure of the island was too great to resist. It began with a simple expedition, a journey to uncover the secrets of the remote island that had captured her imagination since childhood. Naomi's boat, the Azure Voyager, sliced through the choppy waters, leaving a frothy wake in its path as it approached the rugged coastline of the Isle of Despair. As Naomi's boots sank into the sandy beach, a sense of foreboding washed over her, sending shivers down her spine. The air was heavy with the scent of salt and decay, and the dense jungle loomed ominously on all sides, its tangled foliage hiding unseen dangers. Naomi hoisted her backpack onto her shoulders, her heart pounding with excitement and trepidation as she stepped onto the shore. With a deep breath, she forged ahead, her eyes scanning the dense undergrowth for any signs of life. The jungle seemed to come alive with the sound of strange cries and rustling leaves as Naomi ventured deeper into its heart. Shadows danced in the undergrowth, and the oppressive heat pressed down on her like a suffocating blanket, making it difficult to think. Hours passed as Naomi struggled through the dense jungle, her senses on high alert for any sign of danger. But as night fell and darkness descended upon the island, she realized with a sinking heart that she was hopelessly lost, the twisted maze of trees and vines closing in around her like a suffocating embrace. Desperate for shelter, Naomi stumbled upon a clearing in the jungle, a makeshift campsite littered with the remnants of long-abandoned fires 
and crude shelters made from branches and leaves. The air was heavy with the stench of decay, and a sense of foreboding settled over her like a shroud. As she huddled in the darkness, the sound of drums echoed through the jungle, their rhythmic beat sending shivers down her spine. Shadows danced on the edge of her vision, and the feeling of being watched grew stronger with each passing moment, as though unseen eyes were lurking in the darkness, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. But Naomi refused to give in to fear. With a trembling hand, she reached for her backpack, her fingers closing around the comforting weight of her survival knife. Steeling herself for whatever horrors awaited her on the Isle of Despair, she resolved to fight for her life until her last breath. The night passed in a blur of terror and adrenaline, as Naomi struggled to fend off the horrors that lurked in the darkness. But as dawn broke over the horizon, she realized with a sinking heart that her nightmare was far from over. Emerging from the shadows of the jungle came the cannibalistic tribesmen of the island, wild-eyed and feral, their faces painted with blood and ash. With a blood-curdling cry, they descended upon Naomi, their savage weapons glinting in the early morning light as they closed in for the kill. With a primal scream of defiance, Naomi fought tooth and nail against her attackers, her survival instincts kicking into overdrive as she battled for her life. But outnumbered and outmatched, she soon found herself overwhelmed by the sheer ferocity of the cannibal's onslaught, her strength fading with each passing moment. As darkness closed in around her, Naomi felt a cold certainty settle over her, a grim acceptance of her fate as she realized that she would never escape the Isle of Despair alive. And as the cannibals dragged her into the depths of the jungle, their triumphant cries echoing in her ears, she knew that she would become just another forgotten soul lost to the horrors of the island. For on the Isle of Despair, there is no escape from the darkness that lurks within its shadowed depths. And as Naomi's screams faded into the silence of the jungle, the island claimed another victim to add to its ever-growing tally of lost souls. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months as Naomi languished in the clutches of the cannibalistic tribe, her spirit broken and her hope all but extinguished. But even in the darkest depths of despair, a flicker of defiance burned within her, a determination to survive against all odds and escape the clutches of her captors. With each passing day, Naomi studied the ways of the tribe, learning their customs and traditions in a desperate bid to earn their trust and find a way to freedom. She endured unspeakable hardships and trials, her body battered and bruised, but her spirit unbroken. And then, one fateful night, as the tribe gathered to celebrate the coming of the full moon, Naomi seized her chance for freedom. With a swift and silent grace, she slipped away into the darkness, her heart pounding with exhilaration as she raced through the jungle, her pursuers hot on her heels. Through the dense undergrowth she ran, her breath coming in ragged gasps as she pushed herself to the limits of her endurance. But just as she thought she was safe, disaster struck. A sudden misstep sent her tumbling down a steep embankment, her body crashing through the undergrowth until she came to rest at the bottom, battered and broken. As Naomi lay there, her vision swimming and her strength fading fast, she realized with a sinking heart that she was once again at the mercy of the island. But even as darkness closed in around her, she refused to give up hope, her spirit burning bright against the encroaching shadows. And then, just when all seemed lost, salvation appeared on the horizon, a rescue party sent by the authorities to investigate the disappearance of Naomi and her ill-fated expedition. With tears of relief streaming down her cheeks, Naomi was lifted from the depths of despair and carried to safety, her ordeal finally at an end. As she sailed away from the Isle of Despair, Naomi vowed never to return to its cursed shores again, her mind haunted by the horrors she witnessed and the souls lost to its shadowed depths. But even as she left the island behind, she knew that its dark secrets would linger in her memories forever, a reminder of the dangers that lurk in the most remote and forgotten corners of the world. 
In the heart of the English countryside, nestled amidst a sea of whispering pines, stood Blackwood Manor, a grand, imposing mansion with a dark history that sent shivers down the spines of even the bravest souls. For centuries, tales of tragedy and horror had surrounded the manor, its walls echoing with the anguished cries of the past. The story begins with the tragic death of Lady Eleanor Blackwood, the matriarch of the Blackwood family. Legend has it that on a stormy winter's night, Lady Eleanor's spirit was torn from her body by a malevolent force that dwelled within the depths of the manor. Since that fateful night, her ghost has been said to roam the halls of Blackwood Manor, searching for eternal rest. Years passed, and the manor fell into disrepair, its once grand halls now cloaked in darkness and decay. Few dared to venture near, for the whispers of the past seemed to linger in the air like a curse, warning all who approached to turn back before it was too late. But one fateful night, a group of intrepid explorers, drawn by tales of the manor's haunted history, decided to spend the night within its walls. Among them was Emily, a young woman with a fascination for the supernatural, who was determined to uncover the truth behind the legends of Blackwood Manor. As the group entered the crumbling mansion, they were immediately struck by the oppressive atmosphere that hung heavy in the air. Shadows danced across the walls, and strange noises echoed through the empty halls, sending chills down their spines. But Emily remained undeterred, her curiosity driving her forward into the heart of the darkness. As the night wore on, strange things began to happen. Objects moved of their own accord, and eerie whispers echoed through the halls, their words indecipherable, yet filled with malice. The group huddled together, their nerves fraying as the presence of Lady Eleanor's ghost seemed to grow stronger with each passing moment. Then, as the clock struck midnight, all hell broke loose. Doors slammed shut, trapping the explorers within the manor's twisted labyrinth of corridors. The temperature plummeted, and icy fingers seemed to reach out from the darkness, grasping at their very souls. In a desperate bid to escape, the group fled deeper into the bowels of the manor, their hearts pounding with terror. But no matter which way they turned, they found themselves inexorably drawn back towards the heart of the darkness, where Lady Eleanor's ghost awaited them, with eyes as cold as death itself. In the end, only Emily survived to tell the tale of that fateful night at Blackwood Manor. But even now, as she sits by the fire, her eyes haunted by the horrors she witnessed, she knows that some secrets are better left buried in the shadows, for the darkness that lurks within Blackwood Manor is not easily escaped. Nestled deep within the mist-shrouded hills of the Scottish Highlands lay the remote village of Glenhaven, a place steeped in mystery and shadow. For centuries, tales of curses and dark magic had plagued the village, its inhabitants living in fear of the unknown. The story of Glenhaven begins with the tragic death of Agatha MacLeod, a young woman accused of witchcraft by the superstitious villagers. Cursed by her dying breath, it is said that Agatha's vengeful spirit still roams the moors, seeking retribution on those who wronged her. Years later, a group of travellers, drawn by the allure of Glenhaven's haunted history, decided to spend the night within its ancient walls. Among them was James, a sceptic who scoffed at the idea of curses and hexes, and his companions who were eager for adventure. As they entered the village, a chill ran down their spines, and they were immediately struck by the oppressive atmosphere that hung heavy in the air. The cobblestone streets were deserted, and the once thriving marketplace lay abandoned. Ignoring the warnings of the past, the group pressed on, their curiosity driving them deeper into the heart of the village. But as they wandered through the deserted streets, they began to feel as though they were being watched, their every move scrutinised by unseen eyes. As the night wore on, strange things began to happen. Shadows danced in the moonlight, and the air grew thick with an otherworldly chill. Eerie whispers echoed through the darkness, their words indecipherable, yet filled with malice. In a desperate bid to escape, the group split up, each member venturing off on their own in search of answers. 
But as they wandered through the village's haunted streets, they soon realized that they were not alone. Figures lurked in the shadows, their eyes glowing with malevolent intent, and the sound of ghostly laughter echoed through the fog. Panic set in as the group struggled to find their way out of Glenhaven, their hearts pounding with fear. But no matter which way they turned, they found themselves inexorably drawn back towards the heart of the darkness, where Agatha's vengeful spirit awaited them with eyes as cold as death itself. In the end, only James survived to tell the tale of that fateful night in Glenhaven. But even now, as he sits by the fire, his eyes haunted by the horrors he witnessed, he knows that some curses are better left unbroken, for the darkness that lurks within the village is not easily escaped. Deep in the heart of the countryside, surrounded by overgrown fields and twisted trees, stood the remnants of St. Agnes Asylum, a place shrouded in darkness and whispered tales of unspeakable horrors. Once a beacon of hope for the mentally ill, it had long been abandoned, its halls now echoing with the ghosts of the past. The story begins with Dr. Jonathan Harding, a renowned psychiatrist who dedicated his life to caring for the patients of St. Agnes. But as the years went by, rumours began to spread of Dr. Harding's sinister experiments and cruel treatments, turning the asylum into a house of nightmares. Years later, a group of urban explorers, drawn by the allure of the abandoned asylum's haunted history, decided to spend the night within its decaying walls. Among them was Alex, a sceptic who scoffed at the idea of ghosts and spirits, and his friends who were eager for adventure. As they entered the asylum, a chill ran down their spines, and they were immediately struck by the oppressive atmosphere that hung heavy in the air. The halls were littered with debris and graffiti, and the sound of their footsteps echoed ominously through the empty corridors. Ignoring the warnings of the past, the group pressed on, their flashlights cutting through the darkness like beacons of hope. But as they ventured deeper into the asylum's twisted maze of corridors, they began to feel as though they were being watched, their every move scrutinized by unseen eyes. As the night wore on, strange things began to happen. Shadows flickered in the corners of their vision, and the air grew thick with the stench of decay. Doors slammed shut behind them, trapping them within the asylum's labyrinthine halls, and eerie whispers echoed through the darkness, their words sending shivers down their spines. In a desperate bid to escape, the group split up, each member venturing off on their own in search of an exit. But as they wandered through the asylum's haunted halls, they soon realized that they were not alone. Figures lurked in the shadows, their eyes glowing with malevolent intent, and the sound of manic laughter echoed through the corridors. Panic set in as the group struggled to find their way out of the asylum, their hearts pounding with fear. But no matter which way they turned, they found themselves inexorably drawn back towards the heart of the darkness, where Dr. Harding's ghost awaited them with eyes as cold as death itself. In the end, only Alex survived to tell the tale of that fateful night at St. Agnes Asylum. But even now, as he sits by the fire, his eyes haunted by the horrors he witnessed, he knows that some secrets are better left buried in the shadows, for the darkness that lurks within the abandoned asylum is not easily escaped. In the heart of the Louisiana bayou, where the mist hangs heavy and the trees whisper ancient secrets, stood the imposing figure of Greenwood Manor, a mansion steeped in legend and tragedy. Once a grand estate belonging to the wealthy Greenwood family, it had long been abandoned, its halls now echoing with the whispers of the past. The tale of Greenwood Manor begins with the enigmatic figure of Lord Reginald Greenwood, a reclusive nobleman rumoured to have made a pact with dark forces in exchange for wealth and power. But as the years went by, the Greenwood family fell into decline, their once grand estate slowly crumbling into ruin. Years later, a group of paranormal investigators, drawn by the allure of Greenwood Manor's haunted history, decided to spend the night within its decaying walls. Among them was Samantha, a sceptic who prided herself on her rationality. 
and her team of believers who were eager to uncover the truth. As they entered the mansion, a chill ran down their spines, and they were immediately struck by the oppressive atmosphere that hung heavy in the air. The grand halls were now draped in cobwebs and shadows, and the once luxurious furnishings lay in disarray. Ignoring the warnings of the past, the group pressed on, their equipment at the ready to capture evidence of the supernatural. But as they ventured deeper into the mansion's labyrinthine corridors, they began to feel as though they were being watched, their every move scrutinized by unseen eyes. As the night wore on, strange things began to happen. Shadows danced in the corners of their vision, and the air grew thick with an otherworldly chill. Doors slammed shut behind them, trapping them within the mansion's twisted maze of corridors, and eerie whispers echoed through the darkness, their words sending shivers down their spines. In a desperate bid to escape, the group split up, each member venturing off on their own in search of an exit. But as they wandered through the mansion's haunted halls, they soon realized that they were not alone. Figures lurked in the shadows, their eyes glowing with malevolent intent, and the sound of ghostly laughter echoed through the corridors. Panic set in as the group struggled to find their way out of the mansion, their hearts pounding with fear. But no matter which way they turned, they found themselves inexorably drawn back towards the heart of the darkness, where Lord Reginald Greenwood's ghost awaited them with eyes as cold as death itself. In the end, only Samantha survived to tell the tale of that fateful night at Greenwood Manor. But even now, as she sits by the fire, her eyes haunted by the horrors she witnessed. She knows that some secrets are better left buried in the shadows, for the darkness that lurks within the mansion is not easily escaped. In the sleepy town of Willow Creek, nestled amidst the dense forests of the Pacific Northwest, there stood an abandoned house at the edge of town, a relic of a forgotten era, its windows boarded up and its walls cloaked in shadows. Legends whispered of the tragedies that befell those who dared to enter its decaying halls, but for best friends Emily and Jake, the allure of the abandoned house was too great to resist. It was a crisp autumn evening when Emily and Jake, armed with nothing but flashlights and their adventurous spirits, set out to explore the mysteries of the abandoned house. Their footsteps echoed through the silent streets as they approached the looming structure, its dark silhouette looming ominously against the fading light of the setting sun. As they crossed the threshold into the abandoned house, a chill ran down their spines, and they were immediately struck by the oppressive atmosphere that hung heavy in the air. The floorboards creaked beneath their feet, and dust motes danced in the beams of their flashlights as they ventured deeper into the darkness. Ignoring the warnings of the past, Emily and Jake pressed on, their curiosity driving them forward into the heart of the abandoned house. But as they explored its labyrinthine corridors, they couldn't shake the feeling that they were not alone, that something unseen was watching their every move from the shadows. Hours passed as they delved deeper into the abandoned house, their nerves fraying with each creak and groan of the decaying structure. Strange noises echoed through the darkness, and the air grew thick with an otherworldly chill that sent shivers down their spines. Just when they thought they couldn't take any more, Emily and Jake stumbled upon a hidden staircase leading down into the bowels of the abandoned house. With hearts pounding with fear and excitement, they descended into the darkness, their flashlights cutting through the gloom like beacons of hope. As they reached the bottom of the staircase, they found themselves in a vast, cavernous chamber an underground labyrinth of forgotten tunnels and hidden passageways. The air was stale and musty, and the walls were lined with strange symbols and cryptic markings. Determined to uncover the secrets of the abandoned house, Emily and Jake pressed on, their footsteps echoing through the labyrinth as they searched for answers. But as they ventured deeper into the darkness, they soon realized that they were not alone. Figures lurked in the shadows, their eyes glowing with malevolent intent, and the sound of ghostly whispers filled the air. Panic set in as Emily and Jake struggled to find their way out of the labyrinth, their hearts pounding with fear. But no matter which way they turned, 
they found themselves inexorably drawn back towards the heart of the darkness, where a dark secret awaited them, one that would change their lives forever. In the end, only Emily and Jake would emerge from the abandoned house, their minds haunted by the horrors they witnessed within its decaying walls. But even now, as they sit by the fire, their eyes haunted by the shadows of the forgotten, they know that some mysteries are better left unsolved, for the darkness that lurks within the abandoned house is not easily escaped. It was a cold and dreary night when Emma left the office, her mind consumed by thoughts of deadlines and unfinished tasks. As she walked briskly down the dimly lit streets, she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, a prickling sensation that crawled across her skin like a thousand tiny spiders. Glancing over her shoulder, Emma's heart skipped a beat as she caught sight of a figure trailing behind her, a shadowy silhouette that seemed to mirror her every move. With a shiver of unease, she quickened her pace, her footsteps echoing through the deserted streets as she hastened towards the safety of home. But no matter how fast she walked, the figure remained hot on her heels, a silent spectre that dogged her every step, its presence growing ever more oppressive with each passing moment. Panic surged through Emma's veins as she realised with a sinking heart that she was not alone. With trembling hands, she fumbled for her phone, her fingers slipping on the smooth surface as she struggled to dial for help. But before she could press the call button, a voice echoed through the darkness, a voice that sent chills down her spine as she recognised it as her own. Turning slowly, Emma's blood ran cold as she came face to face with her doppelganger, an exact replica of herself, right down to the smallest detail. Their eyes met in a chilling stare, twin pools of fear and confusion reflecting back at each other in the darkness. For a moment, neither of them spoke, the silence between them heavy with unspoken questions and unspoken fears. And then, with a sudden burst of movement, the doppelganger lunged forward, its hands outstretched as though reaching for Emma's throat. With a cry of terror, Emma stumbled backwards, her heart pounding in her chest as she fled down the empty street. But no matter how fast she ran, the doppelganger was always one step behind, its presence looming over her like a dark cloud. As Emma reached the safety of her apartment building, she slammed the door shut behind her, her breath coming in ragged gasps as she leaned against the cool metal surface. But even as she tried to catch her breath, she knew that her ordeal was far from over. For as she stepped into the dimly lit hallway, she caught sight of her reflection in the mirrored wall, a chilling reminder of the doppelganger that stalked her every move. With a sinking heart, she realised that she was trapped in a nightmare from which there was no escape. As the days turned into weeks, Emma lived in fear of her doppelganger, never knowing when it would appear next or what horrors it had in store for her. She barricaded herself inside her apartment, her windows covered with thick curtains to keep out the prying eyes of her twin. But try as she might, Emma could not shake the feeling that her doppelganger was always there, lurking in the shadows just out of sight. And as the nights grew longer and the darkness crept ever closer, she knew that she would have to confront her double once and for all. With a trembling hand, Emma ventured out into the night her heart pounding in her chest as she searched for the source of her torment. But as she rounded a corner, she came face to face with her doppelganger once again, a twisted mirror image of herself, its eyes filled with malice and madness. With a cry of rage, Emma lunged forward, her fists pounding against her doppelganger's chest as she fought to break free from its grasp. But try as she might, she could not overpower her double, its strength far surpassing her own. And then, just when all seemed lost, a blinding light filled the darkness, casting long shadows across the empty street. With a cry of triumph, Emma watched as her doppelganger recoiled in fear, its form flickering and fading like smoke in the wind. As the light engulfed them both, Emma felt a sense of peace wash over her, a feeling of freedom and liberation from the nightmare that had plagued her for so long. And as she stepped into the light, leaving her doppelganger behind in the darkness, she knew that she was finally free. 
Sarah Winchester stood at the window of her daughter Lily's bedroom, watching the sun dip below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink. It was the kind of serene evening that belied the darkness lurking just beneath the surface, a darkness that Sarah could feel creeping closer with each passing moment. Lily, it's time for bed, Sarah called gently, turning away from the window to face her daughter, who was sitting cross-legged on the floor, surrounded by a menagerie of stuffed animals. Lily looked up, her eyes wide with excitement. But Mommy, I'm playing with Mr. Smiles. He says he wants to tell me a story. Sarah's heart skipped a beat at the mention of Lily's imaginary friend, a companion who had suddenly appeared out of nowhere a few weeks ago. At first, she had dismissed it as nothing more than a passing phase, but as time went on, she couldn't shake the feeling that there was something off about Mr. Smiles. Suppressing a shiver, Sarah plastered on a smile and knelt down beside Lily. That's nice, sweetie, but it's time for bed now. You can play with Mr. Smiles tomorrow. Lily pouted, her bottom lip trembling. But Mommy, Mr. Smiles promised to show me his secret hiding spot tonight. He said it's the best place in the whole world. Sarah's stomach clenched at the thought of Lily sneaking out of bed to follow her imaginary friend into the darkness. She had heard enough horror stories to know that imaginary friends could sometimes lead children into dangerous situations, and she wasn't about to take any chances with her daughter's safety. Sweetheart, I'm sure Mr. Smiles' hiding spot is very special, but it's late and you need to get some rest, Sarah said firmly, her voice leaving no room for argument. Reluctantly, Lily nodded, her shoulders slumping in defeat. Okay, Mommy, I'll go to bed. As Sarah tucked Lily into bed and kissed her forehead goodnight, she couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the air like a thick fog. Something about Mr. Smiles didn't sit right with her, and she vowed to keep a close eye on her daughter until she could figure out what was really going on. With a heavy heart, Sarah left Lily's bedroom and made her way downstairs, her mind swirling with thoughts of her daughter's imaginary friend. She poured herself a glass of wine and sank into the comfort of the living room couch, the soft glow of the television providing a welcome distraction from her worries. But no matter how hard she tried to push the thoughts of Mr. Smiles from her mind, they continued to gnaw at her like a persistent itch. There was something about the name that sent a chill down her spine, a feeling of dread that she couldn't shake no matter how hard she tried. Hours passed as Sarah sat alone in the darkness, the house silent except for the soft hum of the television in the background. But just as she was beginning to drift off to sleep, a sudden noise jolted her awake, a creaking floorboard followed by the faint sound of footsteps coming from upstairs. With her heart pounding in her chest, Sarah tiptoed up the stairs, her breath catching in her throat as she reached Lily's bedroom door. She hesitated for a moment, her hand hovering over the doorknob, before slowly pushing it open and stepping inside. What she saw made her blood run cold. Lily was sitting up in bed, her eyes wide with fear, as she stared at the figure standing in the shadows, a tall, dark figure with a twisted grin plastered across its face. Mr. Smiles, Sarah whispered, her voice trembling with fear. The figure turned to face her, its eyes gleaming with malice and madness. Hello, Sarah, it hissed, its voice sending shivers down her spine. I've been waiting for you. With a cry of terror, Sarah lunged forward, her hands outstretched as though reaching for her daughter's imaginary friend. But as her fingers closed around its throat, she realized with a sinking heart that Mr. Smiles was all too real, a flesh and blood monster hiding behind the facade of a child's innocent imagination. For weeks, Mr. Smiles had been whispering dark thoughts into Lily's impressionable mind, filling her head with visions of blood and violence. And now, as Sarah stared into his cold, dead eyes, she knew that she was face to face with a serial killer, a twisted predator who had been preying on the innocent children of their neighborhood for far too long. With a cry of rage, Sarah fought tooth and nail against Mr. Smiles, her adrenaline fueled instincts kicking into overdrive as she struggled to protect her daughter from harm. But try as she might, she could not overpower the monster that lurked within Lily's bedroom 
its strength far surpassing her own. And then, just when all seemed lost, a blinding light filled the darkness, casting long shadows across the empty room. With a cry of triumph, Sarah watched as Mr. Smiles recoiled in fear, his form flickering and fading like smoke in the wind. As the light engulfed them both, Sarah felt a sense of peace wash over her, a feeling of freedom and liberation from the nightmare that had plagued her for so long. And as she stepped into the light, leaving Mr. Smiles behind in the darkness, she knew that she was finally free. But even as she fled into the safety of the night, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that Mr. Smiles was still out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the perfect moment to strike again. And as she cradled Lily in her arms, her heart heavy with the weight of their shared trauma, she vowed to protect her daughter from harm, no matter the cost. For in a world filled with monsters, both real and imaginary, a mother's love was the only weapon she needed to keep her child safe from harm. And as long as Sarah had breath in her body, she would fight tooth and nail to ensure that Lily would never again fall victim to the horrors that lurked in the darkness. The room was cloaked in darkness, illuminated only by the soft glow of moonlight filtering through the curtains. Emily lay in bed, her eyes heavy with sleep as she stared at the mirror hanging on the wall opposite her. It was an ornate antique, passed down through generations of her family, a relic from a time long forgotten. But as Emily gazed into its depths, she couldn't shake the feeling that there was something off about the mirror, a sense of unease that prickled at the back of her mind like a splinter lodged beneath her skin. There were times when she could swear she saw movement in its reflection, a fleeting glimpse of something lurking just beyond the surface. Shaking off her apprehension, Emily closed her eyes and tried to drift off to sleep, pushing aside thoughts of the mirror and the strange sense of foreboding that surrounded it. But no matter how hard she tried, she couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched, a feeling that grew stronger with each passing moment, until it felt as though the very air around her was suffocating. With a sigh of frustration, Emily opened her eyes and glanced once more at the mirror hanging on the wall. And that's when she saw it, a figure standing in the darkness, its eyes gleaming with malice and madness as it stared back at her from within the depths of the glass. With a cry of terror, Emily scrambled out of bed and stumbled backwards, her heart pounding in her chest as she stared at the mirror in horror. The figure in the reflection moved with an unnatural grace, its movements fluid and sinuous, as though it were trying to break free from its glass prison and step into the world beyond. But try as she might, Emily could not tear her eyes away from the mirror, her gaze locked with that of the figure within. And then, with a sudden burst of movement, the figure reached out its hand, its fingers stretching towards Emily, as though trying to pull her into its twisted realm. With a cry of defiance, Emily turned and fled from the room, her footsteps echoing through the silent house as she raced down the hallway towards the safety of the living room. But no matter how fast she ran, she could still feel the figure's eyes boring into her back, its presence looming over her like a dark cloud. As she reached the living room, Emily collapsed onto the couch, her breath coming in ragged gasps as she tried to make sense of what she had seen. There was no denying it now. The figure in the mirror was real, and it was coming for her. But even as she sat there, trembling and terrified, a voice whispered in the back of her mind, a voice that urged her to confront her fears and face the darkness head on. With a steely resolve, Emily rose to her feet and made her way back to the bedroom, her heart pounding in her chest as she approached the mirror once more. As she stood before the mirror, Emily felt a surge of determination wash over her, a burning desire to uncover the truth behind the figure that lurked within its depths. With trembling hands, she reached out and touched the cool surface of the glass, her fingers tracing the outline of the figure's twisted form. And then, with a sudden burst of courage, Emily spoke the words that had been echoing in her mind since she first laid eyes on the mirror. Who are you? she whispered, her voice barely more than a breath. For a moment there was silence, a pregnant pause that hung heavy in the air like a shroud. And then, with a voice like dry leaves rustling in the wind, the figure spoke. 
I am the darkness that dwells within you, it hissed, its voice sending shivers down Emily's spine. I am the fear that lurks in the shadows, the doubt that gnaws at your soul. I am the reflection of all that you hide from yourself, a twisted mirror image of your deepest, darkest desires. With a cry of horror, Emily recoiled from the mirror, her mind reeling from the revelation of what lay within its depths. The figure in the reflection was not some malevolent entity from beyond the grave. It was a manifestation of her own inner demons, a reflection of the darkness that lurked within her own soul. But even as she struggled to come to terms with the truth, Emily knew that she could not allow herself to be consumed by fear. With a steely resolve, she squared her shoulders and met the figure's gaze head on, her eyes blazing with determination. I will not let you control me, she declared, her voice ringing out with a strength she didn't know she possessed. I am stronger than you, and I will not be defined by the darkness that dwells within me. And with those words, Emily turned away from the mirror, leaving the figure behind in the darkness where it belonged. For she knew that while the darkness may always be a part of her, it did not have to define her. She was the master of her own destiny, and no twisted reflection could ever change that. As she walked away from the mirror, Emily felt a weight lift from her shoulders, a sense of freedom and liberation that filled her with hope for the future. For she knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, she would face them head on, armed with nothing but her own inner strength and the knowledge that she was capable of overcoming even the darkest of obstacles.